Dungeons and Dragons is definitely a lot of role-playing, but a large chunk of the game and one of the most important aspects is the combat. So before you jump into combat for the first time and get your hopelessly unprepared ass killed, in this video we're going to give you the breakdown of rules and etiquette in Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Stick around. The first thing to know about Dungeons & Dragons combat is the difference between a round and a turn. A turn is each individual player's moment to play the game, and a round consists of one turn for each player. Each person's turn is obviously their turn, and a round is once every single person has gone. Another thing to note is that each round is broken into six seconds that happen simultaneously. Think of it like super slow motion combat. Now, determining when you go in the turn order is determined by rolling initiative, something that the DM will usually instruct you to do before combat begins. To roll, you simply roll a d20 like you would with any ability check and add your initiative score, which you can find on your sheet right here. Turns are arranged highest to lowest, so you want to roll high if you like going first. Once it's your turn to act, there's a few things you can do on your turn, and these are broken down into four basic parts. You have your movement your action, your reaction, and your bonus action. There are also some things you can do for free as long as it doesn't take longer than six seconds, but we'll get into that. Movement is found on your character sheet and usually ranges from 25 to 40 feet for the average player. Now, it's important to remember that on a standard Dungeons & Dragons grid, each square is five feet. So if you move 30 feet, then you can move a total of six squares in any direction. Math. Another thing to note is that if you are simply trying to run away or catch up to something, you can use your action to instead double your movement for that turn. Very handy in certain situations. However, it is important to note that you will lose your action in this case. Your action is the main thing you want to do in that turn. You can do a handful of things with your action, but the main options are attack, dash, disengage, dodge, or interact. You can swing your sword or axe, or cast a spell, punch or throw an object, all for your action. You'd rather you can dash, like I said, which means you double your speed for that turn as I explained a moment ago. Dodge means you are expecting an attack, and by taking the dodge action, you impose disadvantage on the very next enemy attack. So if they attack twice, it only affects the first swing. Disengage allows you to step away from an opponent without taking an attack of opportunity. And then of course, for your action, you can also open doors, search rooms, or anything else you can think of. This is where the fun comes in because there are really very few limits in Dungeons & Dragons. If you can imagine it, you can certainly try. Now, your bonus action is like a smaller action. Certain spells or abilities allow you to use bonus actions. Not every character has a bonus action, especially at lower levels, but eventually you'll have the opportunity to try something and it will state very clearly that it requires a bonus action in the description. Remember, you can take an action and a bonus action in the same turn. For example, if you want to attack as your action, you can swing your sword, and because you're a cleric, you can bonus action healing word to cure some wounds on yourself or an ally, and then as your movement, you can run away. Now, remember those free actions? Well, in this example, the free action could be me picking up a sack in tandem with your movement. These free actions are vaguely described and mostly up to your DM to allow. Now, what about reactions? Well, reactions are things that occur on the chance you have an ability or spell that calls for it. For example, the wizard spell shield is a reaction. You can activate this spell whenever someone else attacks you. It's important to note that certain spells are activated only under certain circumstances, such as taking damage of a certain type, for example. And each spell or ability will state clearly whether it's an action, bonus action, or reaction, and what sets it off, so read carefully. Now this was just a quick breakdown of combat, and it takes a little practice to get it down right. A great way to learn is to do a practice session with the party or just the DM if you'd like a more one-on-one -on -one experience to gain some confidence. Now as for etiquette, a few quick do's and don'ts. Respect the rules and the turns. If it's not your turn, let the others play. Of course, if you have questions or concerns or there's some role playing, feel free to speak up. The DM is there to help guide the game, so it's okay to ask questions, but talking during someone else's turn or being on your phone, it's just rude. Remember, the DM put a lot of work into this and everyone took time out of their day to play. At least pretend you want to be there. Never argue the word of the DM. If you have a rule issue, bring it up after the game. There's no reason to slow down gameplay. Now, obviously, if the DM has said call me out on everything, then that's how they want to play. This is a great reason why a session zero is important to establish table rules and address problems or homebrew rules. But more on that in another video. Hopefully this was useful for you to help understand the basic rules and etiquette of the game. 
Combat can be tricky, so keep it up, and soon enough, with some practice, you'll be hacking and slashing your way through the darkest of dungeons. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Feed your displacer beasts, people, and we'll see you next time, adventurers. Thank <laughs> you.